comes, and uh, maybe there'll be a, a ring announcement happening any moment now. Just while we're waiting for that, Harry, what's your gut feeling about this? My gut feeling is that Lewis will come out on top because he is the class fighter of the two, and I would say Lewis in five. Well, we are assured, these are the scenes behind uh, the, the ring, as you can see now live as Rackman, the rock, heads towards the auditorium. 6,000 people packed in here to greet the challenger. Well, this is the biggest moment of his boxing career, no question about that. Possibly even the biggest moment of his life. Down at ringside to describe this defence of his world heavyweight title by Lennox Lewis. You know, Marvin Hagler and Jim Neely. Well, without a single shadow of a doubt, this is the biggest moment in any boxer's career. Um, Rachman into the ring. He has absolutely nothing to lose, Marvin Hagler has. He. This is his night. I believe so. Uh, I know that feeling. I've been through that feeling before. And it's got to be a scary thing. Just hoping that this crowd, because this crowd is, I think, basically, they are Linux fans. So, hope that they don't bother him and he's just prepared to just go to work. I know you won't mind me saying this, but there's always something about a big fight, especially a world heavyweight title fight, that makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck, even yours. It does, I tell you. <laughs> Well, we're now waiting for the entrance of the man who regards himself as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. We're here in Carnival City. There really is a carnival atmosphere. We're in an arena that's fashioned after the manner of a big top. But when these men come in, they are anything but clowns. And here is Lennox, the Lion Lewis, as he styled himself. Dancers, this is going to be some entrance. Uh, can I have this turned up a little bit? Because it's hard for me. Wonderful effects. Not perhaps as glittery and gaudy as some that we've seen. No swings, nobody coming, coming in from the ceilings. But uh, the best part of six feet six and over 18 stones is coming into the ring any second. For this is 15th world... Solitude and quiet, a bit of reflection, time to think about the moment and the task at hand. And here is the man, born in London, moved to Kitchener, Ontario, at the age of 11 years old, and is now the heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Once he takes those three steps up into the ring, he is going to be on his own. But he's done it many, many times before. Only once in his professional career has he left the ring, defeated, and he's determined that that will never, ever, ever happen to him again. Brother Dennis beside him with one of his belts. WBC, the IBF and the IBO heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox the Lion Lewis, comes to Africa for Thunder in Africa, the biggest single event since the Rumble in the Jungle some 27 years ago. He's at his heaviest, but he's at his most focused. Oh, the 
that remains now the introductions for this world title fight and we're going to hand over to the MC for the evening who is the top master of ceremonies in the nation of South Africa Mr. Ladies Duncan Pollock in association with Cedric Krishna Productions and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, brings you Thunder in Africa. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is for the WBC, IBO and IBF heavyweight world. Our supervisors from the WBC, please welcome Mr. Frank Quill from Melbourne in Australia and Mr. Sam Ramsamy from Johannesburg in South Africa. Our supervisor from the IBF, Marion Mohammed from New Jersey in the United States and from the IBO from Florida in the United States, Mr. Ed Levine. Our judges at ringside. From Washington DC in the United States, Valerie Dorset. From London in England, Mr. Dave Paris, and from Johannesburg, South Africa, Mr. Tabu Spampool. <laughs> Introducing the principals to you. Fighting out of the blue corner on my right, he weighed at 107.96 kilograms, 238 pounds. His record, 34 wins, two losses, 28 wins by way of knockouts. He is in the black and red trunks. The former IBF Intercontinental Champion and undefeated former WBU Heavyweight Champion of the World from Baltimore, Maryland in the United States. Please welcome Hasim Kulwak. A big round of applause, but then there's always a round of applause for the underdog. And we should never ever underestimate Ladies the champion. And the referee for this fight from Turin in Belgium, Mr. Daniel van der Wielen. We get to the champion. He weighed in 114.99 kilograms, 253 and a half pounds. His record of 38 wins, one loss, one draw, 29 wins by way of knockout. He's in the white trunks with Red Truman. He brings to the ring a gold medal from the 88 Olympic Games in Seoul, Korea. He brings with him the WBC, IBF, and IBO heavyweight world titles. He comes from West Ham in London, England. And he is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Thank you. Well, Frank Maloney's just about to make his way down beside us. He's going to come to join us. I, you'd never actually guess who he's supporting. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite as blatantly patriotic, but then Frank Maloney is particularly proud of that. We are about to start the contest for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. A man from Baltimore and Maryland contested this some 60 years ago, but Red Berman was knocked out in five rounds by Joe Lewis. And uh, Lennox Lewis, different spelling needless to say, sometimes different pronunciation, is in no mood to do anything less, I'm quite sure. The question Marvin Hagler has been all the way through the build-up to this, which Lennox Lewis, Lennox Lewis are we going to see here tonight? Well, what I'm looking at right now is Rodgers kind of dry. You know, he didn't really work up a big sweat in the, in, the, in the dressing room there. That could be a major factor right now in the first round. Lennox looked very, very loose, very confident. And, uh, you know, he's seeing when he came in the ring just dancing. He's just putting his punches together. Even that jab kind of just shook Rodgers right there. Everybody has made such a lot about the sheer size of Lennox Lewis, but in terms of conditioning, although Lewis is 16 pounds heavier, if you look at the waistline of the two men, Lewis looks in better condition. He looks in better condition. I was surprised at the shape that he's in.
But I'd like to see Lewis keeps his hands up a little higher, though. Because this guy here, Rockman, looks like he's turned for a lucky punch in the first round. I noticed that he'd throw a jab to the body and come over the top with a right hand. Oh. Not too far away by the reigning champion, Lennox Lewis. Tried to draw the boxer's hands down with the shot to the body himself. Lovely variation. Lewis towering over his opponent by some three inches. The only mistake in his career has been that loss to Oliver McCall. Very nasty scar on the right cheek of Rachman, but that was due to a car accident some years ago. Well, Lewis has got to keep that left hand up a little higher because Rachman is still looking for the right. Looking for that lucky right hand shot. Well, that's the one, as we've said on so many occasions, that uh, cost him his title and perhaps 30 or 40 million dollars. That's the sort of money the heavyweights make. I don't think even Marvin, you made that sort of money. <laughs> oh, no, I wish I did. See, there's the right hand that I was telling you about. Rockman just caught it with the right hand. And, uh, you know, as you know, uh, Lennox Lewis will try to retaliate that. Rachman didn't quite have the hand speed of McCall or one or two of the other boxers that Lewis has met. But Lewis now will realize that he has to keep that left up. And that's a good solid jab from the champion. Well, He's got a four or five uh, reach advantage in terms of... Uh, Actually jabbing out that right hand. Well, you know, I know that Manuel Stewart is probably going to jump right on him when he gets back in the corner. Because you can see he's getting hit with punches that he should never get hit with. Rockman, the rock, and will he be the rock upon which Lennox Lewis's career will founder? Somehow, I don't think so. Lewis being a little bit telegraphic with that right hand of his as we come up to the end of this first round. Better work by Lewis, up on his toes, bouncing confident, 10 seconds to go. A little faint of the right, faint of the right again. Two men who know their business. Well, you know, one thing that I can say, Rockman uh, is showing scared of Lewis, that's for sure. So Lennox Lewis, now 35 years old, and Emmanuel Stewart, his senior trainer, straight in front of him. And it wasn't a bad uh, round at all, I just... Interesting to see how the punches broke down. Well, much more accurate uh, by Lennox Lewis. Looking good, champion. Just like that. And keep, every time you punch, get move. Dip jab. Bang the right kidney inside, okay? Suck it in. Stay like that. Don't let things get you excited. Just stay like you are. Nice and relaxed. Suck it in. Second in again, one more. Good. Next step, go strong. Well, they must be fairly pleased, despite the uh, difference in punches thrown and landed with the performance of Rachman in that first round. Well, Rachman has more than survived the first round and has posed one or two problems for the champion, Lennox Lewis. Well, you know, I, I felt as though that round was very much even. You know, they both was testing each other out. Nobody really done any real damage. I believe now that the, all the butterflies are gone now and they're going to get the show on the road. Yeah, well, Lewis suddenly stepped up the pace a little bit and there was real venom in that right hand that he threw over the top. And you can see the whole tempo of this contest oh. starting to pick up. Well, see, this is what I was telling you. Manu Stewart couldn't wait to get Lennox Lewis back in the corner and let him and tell him that he's dropping that right hand, that left hand there. You don't want Lennox Lewis to get too over anxious to fry that right hand. Well, Rachman has a terrific record in oh, terms of the yeah, knockouts. There was a good combination by Lewis. That was a nice left uppercut right hand, and Lewis is very known for that uppercut. And if he found that, they, that he can catch him with that, I think he's going to use it a lot more. Do you feel the altitude that was probably trying to take effect on one of the fighters? Rachman walked onto a very good short left from Lewis, who delayed the punch ever so slightly, filled him, and then his man came straight onto it. Manny Stewart not too far away from us in the Lewis corner, just gesturing to his man to come forward. Oh, oh uppercut yeah, once yeah, again. Nice uppercut. If he finds that secret right there, and if it's working one time and working twice now, he's going to use it again. And Rachman now covering him up. He has felt the power of his opponent, and when you feel the power of somebody that big, it must send shivers, not just on your spine, but through your very existence. I remember getting hit one time by the giant the Beast Maccabi. I learned something after that uppercut. <laughs> so a much better round this for Lennox Lewis without any shadow of a doubt. 
uppercut, you know, Rock don't know how to fight in the inside as far as crossing his arms to prevent that uppercut, and that's what I thought that he was really working with in training to prevent Lewis's uppercut and that overhand right. Referee Daniel van der Weyler from Belgium was the man who should have been judging at the first Lewis Holyfield fight, which is a draw. Good stiff left once again from the champion. Settled into a nice pattern. And almost arrogantly and confidently he pushes again, his man away. Again, Lewis is looking for that overhand right. And when he throws the right hand, then he's going to bring that uppercut under again. Decent little left hand from the challenger coming in. And again. So he's trying to vary his work a little bit and trying to confuse Lennox Lewis. He's actually trying to get him out of there in this round. And you're wondering if, like I said, the, out the uh, altitude is, is bothering Lennox because he's got his mouth open, and that's a bad sign. Lewis putting his man on the back foot at the end of the round, and a baleful stare between the two. And it's been nice and peaceful all the way through Marvin Hagler, but there was a genuine look of hostility there. Oh, yeah, because... Uh, he wanted to get this guy out of there. He wanted to get Rockman out of there, and he couldn't, he couldn't believe that Rockman took those uppercuts like that. Well, interesting variation in that round. We saw uh, many more body shots than we saw in the first round. Rockman's face marking up already. Lennox Lewis looking calm and collected. Remember, we are 6,000 feet above sea level. Frank Maloney, <laughs> well, that is an outfit and a half. Frank Maloney, I'm not sure that he will get into the royal enclosure at Ascot on race day with that. When you get around, when you're inside, work inside, he's only hit with the right hand. Well, you know, the way that I feel, Rotman has got to put more pressure on Lennox because Lennox is just standing on the outside. See, there's that uppercut that I was telling you about that was very dangerous. He needs to, to fill that space in there. He's got to cross those arms in the inside. Round three. Right, and Lewis looking for that big combination again. And for a big man, he has got terrific hand speed. We wondered which Lennox Lewis we would see. Was it the one who was resigned to going the full distance with David Tua? Or the one who tucked Andrew Galotta away in considerable style? And maybe as a combination, overhand right from Lewis. And there's a bit of bruising around the left-hand side of the face of Racing. Again, uh, Rodman's still a dangerous fighter right now because he's jabbing to the body and he's looking for that overhand right. Well, we were talking about uh, Rachman not having broken much of a sweat before this contest, uh -huh. but he really is sweating now. <laughs> After those couple uppercuts, uppercuts, you would be sweating too. <laughs> Lewis getting the measure of his man. Lewis dominating the center of this ring. Short right hand inside from the champion. And he's able to tie Rachman up when the challenger comes in. Exactly, a beautiful uppercut there. Uh, that's what he's developed. This is what Manuel Stewart has taught him. And you remember years ago when he used to drop that punch, he didn't use it to telegraph it. Now he's, he throws it so quick you can't even know it's coming. The swelling underneath the left eye of the challenger has grown considerably. Lewis with his wife open. Again, the big right hand, but timed it very right poorly. Hand. I think that would hurt me. <laughs> Rachman very slowly puts his hands up. There's that right hand. Lewis read it very well. Was on the retreat. And then has closed his man down. He really has a nice repertoire, Lewis. Oh, he's he? doing real well. But the, the problem that I'm looking at right now is he's got his mouth open. This could be a dangerous shot. If he gets hit in the jaw with his mouth open, uh, that's a dangerous. He's got to close that mouth. It's got to be the altitude here. Left and then a, a right and then a short left from Lewis. Dropped the left hand, nearly got himself caught again. That's what I see, I see. Rockman now, the more he, he's starting to get more confident now. See, there's another shot. After he takes these kind of punishment, punishing shots, the uppercut, he starts to get more braver. But I can see the left swelling over the left eye now. Well, Rockman matching Lewis more or less in this round, jab for jab, there's very little in it. Just about half a minute to go to the end of the third. There were odds of uh, 200 to 1 on Rachman winning this in the first round. Lewis well, started as a 15 or 18 to 1 on favourite. It's still uh, too early, you know, and I still don't count Rachman out. And Lennox Lewis shouldn't count him out either. 
Well, a little uh, flurry at the end of this run shows that Rachman is by no means finished. And to use that old boxing adage, he really has come here to fight. Well, this is the kind of fight that we were here looking for. Good little clip at the end uh, from Lennox Lewis and Gary Richards with Frank Maloney. Frank, what do you think so far? So far, he's doing everything textbook. He's, he's got his distance now. He's starting to find the body, which he did in the first round and a half. And now he's just landing shots, hopefully at will. And I think, you know, another round of this and maybe the fifth round, I think Rackman are beginning to go. The eye's beginning to swell underneath as well from the, the jab, which is really working fast first class. He's got to be careful, though, hasn't he? Yeah, Rackman's dangerous. But, he, you know, Lennox seems to have found a distance, as I said. He's getting the right hand in, which was missing in the first round. And he's, he's, he's starting to attack the body, which he hasn't been doing. So, you know, I think it's just a matter of time and patience. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Gary. Well, there's been a fair old uh, number of punches thrown in this contest so far, and most of them, I suspect, have come from uh, Lennox Lewis. Well, you, know, <laughs> you know what I see, Jim, is that when he, got, when he uh, got caught with that body shot, the left to the body, he backed up out of there and then got caught with a left hook. That's a bad move uh, on the side of a fighter. Never back straight back up in the line. You've got to keep the head moving from side to side exactly, every time. From side to side. Never show your opponent that you back straight back because he's going to walk right on top of you. Just like Lin is catching him now, probably working on that eye, that left eye. Good jab by Lewis, and he looks a lot stronger in this run. Oh, uppercut by the champion. Rachman in a little bit of trouble. To be fair to him, he came back, and that right hand of his has come oh, yeah. in. He a was great challenger he is. Rachman and said that he's going to make this war. Well, he has gone to war. Daniel van der Vela brings them apart. We suspected that we uh, may not need the judges. There's a bit of a timeout been taken. Lewis trying that uppercut again. <laughs> that was nice. That was a nice try right there. I couldn't see Rockman trying to walk into that. He's got to keep the pressure on Lennox though. Lewis, Lewis a little bit flat footed at the moment. A little flat footed and a little dirty hitting behind the head. Lennon is known for uh, holding and punching behind the head. Rachman still throwing good shots. He's got to close the gap in the, right now with Lennox. Well, Lewis with the mouth uh, really open, and he's uh, trying to suck in what little oxygen there is here at 6,000 feet, just outside Johannesburg in the aptly named Carnival City. Well, the referee telling Lewis off. Good defense by the champion into the second half of this, uh, the fourth round. A lot of people predicted it wouldn't go as far as this, but well, Rachman is still there. Well, I predicted this. The way he's looking right now, he should go four or five rounds. Now it's Lewis's turn to hold on. It's a little bit untidy in this round, and Lewis hasn't been nearly as dominating. Certainly not compared with the third round. Rodman's got to get close in case take. Ah, oh, beautiful. This one he was trying to suck, suck Linus Lewis in again to throw the right hand, and he counted with his own right. I think to be fair, Lewis just moved the chin like half a half a half an inch to the side, and it glanced off. But Lewis, obviously, as we know, has a very good chin. Well, you know, you see Linus Lewis now playing with him, dropping both hands, and you can see that this guy is a dangerous fighter, this uh, Rockman. Well, how many people have we seen do that and got themselves caught? Exactly. Just about 25 seconds to go. Lewis trying to be first with that jab. Well, there's a little bit of a bounce now on the step of the, uh, the man in the white trunks, the champion Lennox Lewis. Oh, yeah. A smile on the face of Lewis, but Rachman is noted not just for a good right hand, but a good left jab, and he's getting that through. Well, you know, Lennox Lewis has been a lot of times 12 rounds in the championship fight. Rockman has been two times, 12 rounds, and both times he had won in the last round. Well, that was a very good uh, finish to that round. So four gone, and Lewis, one suspects, has uh, thrown certainly many more in the way of punches. You start shooting the left hooks, you're going to be knocking out of here. Shoot the left hooks, just pick up on the left. Well, 51 to 43 in terms of uh, punches landed, so Lewis hasn't got his own way. And interesting, Marvin, that last round, it was the challenger who landed more shots. Sure, well, you know, he kind of rocked, uh, not rocked, but, you know, I think Lennox was more surprised by getting caught with that punch. 
In and out, bro. Big ones, bro. Big ones. In and out. I mean, you got to respect this guy. Well, a bit of action from, from that run. And Rachman, the hands held up, and that was a good round the corner left from the challenger. And when somebody that size hits you, you suddenly think, what am I doing here? Uh, 253 pounds going inside your head. Uh, I think somebody's going to have a headache here tonight. Well, at the moment, that wasn't a bad shot right at the end by Rachman. I believe if I was Lennox Lewis, I would just try boxing this guy, work on that left eye. Close that eye right up. Not too far away by Lewis. Again, Rockman staying too far, in, uh, too far back. Everybody talks about the fact that Lewis hasn't been here for that long, but it's been nearly 260 days since uh, Rachman had a contest. He was supposed to fight in October, but had to have a little sister move from his lower back. So while he's been preparing as best he can, he's perhaps a little bit rusty in terms of sheer competition. Lewis looking more confident. He's looking more confident, but he's... he's uh, Manu Stewart, I think, has got him picking his hands back up, not being uh, so, so much of a fancy dance. Well, the sweat from the pair of them just uh, showering over <laughs> us here at ringside in our comedy position. Got my hair all wet, too. <laughs> Where did you leave it? <laughs> Lewis gets the challenger in his own corner, and underneath Manny Stewart saying, come forward, come forward. Now, this is where Rackman does not want to be. Well, they're right in our corner right now. Well, Lewis, strangely, let him away. Well, you know, Rockman to me is a sneaky kind of a fighter. You know, he backs up. You think you got this guy. You think he's not going to come back and fight. Then all of a sudden, he like puts his head down and just throws crazy punches, looking for that lucky shot. Midway through the fifth, Rockman oh, still there. There right you go. Too far away. Whoa. <laughs> This is the shot that I'm just talking about. He put that head down and he just lets it go. Lewis smiles, but he knows it wasn't too far away. Wonderful jab by Lewis. There again, Lennox Lewis is starting to drop the hand. The left hand is going down again. Put a swelling on the upper lip of uh, Lennox Lewis. And a little bit underneath his own left eye. Well, Good combination. Good right body shot to Rodman. I think Rodman felt that one. He's going to make him pay for that, that right hook that he just got caught with. Oh! Oh! Oh, he's got him! He's got him! He got Kellis and he's got him! Is it Oliver McCall all over again? It is! And Lewis has gone! Lewis has gone! It's another upset of immense proportions. This has been billed as thunder in Africa. And the thunder and the lightning and tempest have washed over Lennox Lewis. And all his titles have gone. And he has only himself to blame. Stunning finish. They knew all about the Rathman right hand. They told him about it. They said, don't do what you don't did against that. Oliver McCall. And despite it all, he got too careless. What a finish. Too overconfident. That's what we was worried about before the beginning of this fight. And I told you it only takes one second. Rodman put the attack on him with three or four uh, left hooks and then counted with that right hand. And that I felt that right hand. Well, there is the happiest man on the planet. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The rock has triumphed. The lion has been humbled. Unbelievable. That is right up there with the rumble in the jungle, with, well, McCall stopping Lewis more recently, with Nassim Hamed losing his title. But I have to say there are very, very few upsets. Marvin Hager will come close to this. Well, we was talking about upsets all, all, all tonight. And uh, this has got to be the biggest one. I think of uh, either it ties that Mike Tyson and, uh, and Douglas. What a finish. What a right hand. What a challenger. And now, what a champion. Oh, he's got a powerful punch, this Rockman. Well, he certainly has. He wants to go over to the Lewis corner and say thank you very much indeed. Lennox Lewis got caught a way back in 1994 in Wembley by Oliver McCall. He swore he would never get caught like that again. And what do you know, he did get caught 
like that again. There, look at Lewis's left hand. It's absolutely nowhere near, and he let it go. Oh, what a shot! What a contact! That is because Lennox Lewis didn't keep his hands up, and he was backing up anytime that a fighter backs up and drops his hand. He's vulnerable for a good shot. Well, there was serious controversy, exactly. and he wasn't allowed to continue against McCall, but there was never any doubt about it. And if anything, that was a better punch by Rachman than the one we saw from Oliver McCall some seven and a half years ago. Well, I gotta tell you something, Jim. When you take punches like that, like with Oliver McCall and now with The Rock, it's very hard for you to bounce back again. Well, I mean, no, also all the fighters out there now, Lennox is, is, not, a, Lennox is not a threat now. They know if they tag him, he's got to go down. Well, for the second time in his career, Lennox Lewis has found himself in real trouble. Well, there it is. Lewis couldn't believe it. Rachman certainly believed it because he believed in himself. I don't know the reason... Well, we can watch this over and over and over again. It was the punch of dreams from Rachman and the punch of nightmares for Lennox Lewis. Flat on his back and counted out and his title's gone. Well, maybe I made the wrong addition. I said somebody's going to go in the fourth or the fifth round. Yeah, but you got the wrong somebody. <laughs> I got the wrong somebody. Frank, what went wrong? He threw the best punch of the fight. You can't say nothing about that. Um, he threw the best right hand. He threw thunder in Africa. This is a massive shock, isn't it, for world boxing? On the night, the best man won. You can't say no more than that. How will Lennox take this, Frank? Um, we'll see after this fight. OK, we'll talk to you more a, a little bit later on, but I've got to ask you at this stage, in the contact, it says a rematch. Um, uh, that'll all be sorted out after at the moment. Okay, thank you, Frank. The fireworks explode. The celebrations will begin. Rachman goes to his knees in exultation with the three belts around various parts of his body. And there's that finish again. And there was nothing Lewis or indeed Every, any heavyweight in the division I think could have done about that the 10 count was unequivocal the ticker tape is coming streaming down from the heavens the cameras and that picture will be in the papers around the world in the not too distant future Lewis defeated once again a shock of monumental proportions here in Carnival City Jim I, I really believe that the altitude had a lot to do with that uh, this fight here, Lennox Lewis, I, I was speaking to you, he had his mouth open and it was hard for him to breathe all, all through this fight. And as you know, when he got caught with the right hand, he had his mouth open, gasping for air. Well, we could look at that a hundred times uh, and we still wouldn't believe it. But Lewis has got to believe it now, doesn't he's he? He's got to believe it, but he can't believe it now because his eyes are gone. He was trying to stand up and get back into this fight, but he was completely gone. Well, we spoke uh, to Nick Durant earlier. You've been working in the Rocks corner and you predicted that. Yeah, I said anyway after four, it's Rocks fight. Came to the fifth and it was all over. Listen, Lennox is a great champion. Man. Okay, we'll take a pause for a second and uh, Hasim Rockman, we're going to hear from him. question in here. Let me get in a, a word oh, now, I'm the champion of the world now, now. You gotta let me talk a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> All right. Do you, do, you, do you feel that 
the long preparation you did here in Africa as well as back in America is the reason that you had that calm and, the, and gave you an edge over him. Well, I believe that uh, I never really took an opponent serious to the fact where I thought he could beat me, except Lennox Lewis. I felt like if I didn't train properly, he would have the edge. I kept my prayers in order, I did all my training, and I came off the tour, as you see, one punch, one punch power with the right hand. I mean, give me some props. Let's, let's see, all right, let's take a look at the one punch Here and tell us what was happening. Did that punch earlier in the round set this up? Well, I felt like, uh, Woo, woo, like, like, woo, that should be ready to off. Anyway, uh, I felt like uh, we, actually, we accidentally hit, but, and uh, he, tried to, he tried to take advantage of me. Must have said, like, Corey Sanders when I was wiping my eye, they try to come get me. When they see me, like, I feel like I'm vulnerable. So they come try to get me. And when they come try to get me, a hurt man is a dangerous man. So when they come get me, I just, you know, come to the law, let it go. What was your plan coming into the fight? Because it seemed that you came out and threw about eight or ten jabs to his stomach in the first round. Well, I, I wanted to hit him to the body, and I felt like the longer the fight go, regardless of whether we was in altitude or not, that I, I mean, I have a very, very strong jab. Anybody can attest to that who's been in the ring with me. And I knew it would take its toll on him. There's no excuses. We ain't getting to the later rounds. Like everybody predicted, I wouldn't have a chance in one through five. What round was it, number five? His mouth was oh. open as early as the second round. Did well, that signal to you that he was having a problem? Well, uh, I wasn't, I know Lennox Lewis is a very KG veteran. He got him made scored his whole corner. Everybody was talking about the altitude. He could have been trying to bait me in. So I wasn't really paying attention to that. So now you... Lennox, commiserations, what was your verdict? Boy, I can't believe that. That's the only thing I can say. Um, you know, I come with a, a good shot, but boy, I, I didn't even see it, but I felt fine after. You landed with some good punches early on, and, and, and so did he, but you could tell straight away that you were in a fight. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, I felt good going in there. Um, you know, I come with a good punch, so I can't say anything about that. But uh, next time. You, I know, have a rematch. Um, when would that like you to be? As soon as possible, for real. Yeah. I can't even believe that. You're, you're very philosophical. You don't seem too disappointed. No, not really. You know, I felt fine in there. I felt I was, I was winning the fight. You know, this is what happens in heavyweight boxing. You get caught with a good shot, you go down. If you don't beat the count, the fight stops. Simple as that. Okay, one or two people will ask, what about the fitness? What about the altitude? Yeah, no, I felt fine. I felt fine in there. Uh, you know, I was going about my work nice and comfortable. But, you know, this is what happens in boxing. You get caught with a shot and this is what happens. So what is the plan for you now? Yeah, definitely a rematch because there's no way this guy can beat me. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I come with a great punch and, uh, you know, he's a champion today. Uh, and when would that be, Lennox? As soon as possible. I want to I get back in there as soon as possible. This doesn't make you sort of think, well, I achieved so much, I'll call it a day. You still want to continue? No, absolutely not. I don't give up that soon. Uh, there's no way Hasim Rahman can beat me. I definitely beat him in the rematch. And I want to get it on as soon as possible. Lennox, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, a lot of very familiar faces with a very familiar look on them. And uh, memories go back to that Oliver McCall. Huge upset and huge disappointment. Lennox Lewis, perhaps more philosophical than he has been, but he's made an awful lot of money. And once again, Marvin, the questions must be asked about his preparation because I think it was all down to that. Exactly. Their altitude, I told you in the second round, he had his mouth open. It was hard to breathe. And uh, when, you, when you're breathing like that, you, you're vulnerable for a punch. It could be just a light one, but he could knock you out. Yes, he looked a little bit too casual as well. He, he perhaps never thought that when he moved backward and that, that Rachman would chase him. Well, see, this is the thing. Uh, George Foreman mentioned the same thing. You can't go in the ring too overconfident. And at that stage, it looked very much as if, uh, as if Lewis was certainly winning the contest. I mean, he had, he, had, he had thrown more punches. Well, you know, when he backed up against the rope, and he, like I said, it could be the weight factor that he was too big that he couldn't get, away, couldn't get out the way of that punch. He said he'd never seen it coming because what he was trying to do, I think, was to cover, cover his shoulder over the chin where he got caught or try to grab Rockman again with the, with the left hand and go, and go around him.